Welcome to Clinical Minute. Amanda is a 28-year-old woman, Gravita 1 Para 0, who is 30 weeks pregnant. She lives with her boyfriend, with whom she has been in a monogamous relationship for five years. She comes into your practice for her routine prenatal visit, complaining about a mild vaginal irritation and vaginal discharge, which she describes as thin and malodorous. Her pregnancy has been uncomplicated so far, and all prenatal lab results have been normal. She reports good fetal movement. On physical exam, you observe a moderate amount of vaginal discharge. The vaginal mucosa and cervix appear reddened and inflamed. In all other respects, the exam is unremarkable. You send a wet prep of vaginal secretions. Remembering that an elevated vaginal pH during pregnancy merits evaluation for premature rupture of membranes and preterm labor, you also order a fern test and fetal fibronectin. While you await the results, you consider the rest of your differential diagnosis. If premature rupture of membranes and preterm labor are ruled out, your differential diagnosis will include vulvovaginal candidiasis, bacterial vaginosis, trichomoniasis, vaginal discharge associated with pregnancy, and idiopathic leucorrhea. Both bacterial vaginosis and trichomoniasis have been associated with preterm labor, so it's important to diagnose and treat them appropriately. Bacterial vaginosis, or BV, is a clinical syndrome characterized by an imbalance of vaginal flora. It is associated with a loss of certain lactobacillus species, typically lactobacillus crispitus or genzyne, with a concomitant overgrowth of anaerobic bacteria. It is the most common cause of abnormal vaginal discharge or malodor among women who present for care. Bacterial vaginosis is widespread. Some common associations include multiple partners, a new partner, a female partner, douching, and lack of condom use. Symptoms include malodorous, thin, white vaginal discharge, although many women with BV are asymptomatic. Bacterial vaginosis is associated with several adverse consequences. It has been linked to pregnancy-related complications such as premature rupture of membranes, preterm labor, preterm birth, intraamniotic infection, and postpartum endometritis. BV is also associated with a higher incidence of complications after gynecologic surgery. It is not entirely clear whether BV is an STI in the usual sense. No sexually transmitted pathogen is known to be a cause. On the other hand, risk factors for BV are similar to those of STIs, and several other STIs are more frequent in women with BV, including HIV, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and genital herpes. Trichomoniasis is caused by the protozoa Trichomonas vaginalis and is one of the most common STIs with an annual incidence of 5 to 7 million in the U.S. Trichomoniasis is associated with a history of new or multiple partners, other STIs, transactional sex, or injection drug use. Symptoms in women include a malodorous yellow-green vaginal discharge with vulvar irritation, although up to one-third of women are asymptomatic. In the past, trichomoniasis was considered a nuisance infection with few, if any, serious consequences. More recently, researchers have documented associations with preterm labor and low birth weight. Trichomoniasis also appears to increase the risk of HIV transmission to HIV-exposed women. In HIV-positive individuals, treatment of trichomonas has been shown to reduce HIV shedding, possibly decreasing the risk of HIV transmission to seronegative partners. The wet prep shows no yeast, clue cells, or motile trichomonads. However, you are aware of the low sensitivity of this diagnostic method, and given the history and risk factors for pregnancy, you order a vaginal swab NAT for T. vaginalis. The NAT for T. vaginalis returns with a positive result. You consider how to share this information with Amanda in a way that will focus on the positive aspects of sexual health and reduce the stigma that is sometimes associated with an STI diagnosis. You contact Amanda and say, 
The lab test showed that you have a very common infection called trichomoniasis. It is transmitted from person to person during sex, but most people don't realize they have it. It can be cured. I recommend we treat it with an antibiotic called metronidazole. You call in a prescription for metronidazole, 2 grams orally in a single dose. You also make arrangements for her partner to be treated. You explain that the infection is often detected without a recent new partner and is not a sign of infidelity. You ask Amanda if she has any questions. When answering her questions, you should consider that many patients lack basic understanding about sexual health and STI prevention. Counseling messages you share with her should try to normalize sexual health and avoid judgmental language. Oral formulations of metronidazole and tinidazole are FDA approved for the treatment of trichomoniasis. The recommended regimens include metronidazole, four 500 mg tablets orally, two grams total, as a single dose, tinidazole, four 500 mg tablets orally, two grams total, as a single dose, or metronidazole, one 500 mg tablet orally twice daily for seven days, or tenodazole 500 mg orally twice daily for five days. Note that the seven-day metronidazole regimen is also effective for treating bacterial vaginosis. Intravaginal treatments, such as metronidazole gel, are not reliable and are not recommended. The imidazole drugs sometimes have an effect similar to that of disuforum, or antabuse, which produces nausea when mixed with alcohol. Patients should be advised to avoid consuming alcohol while taking either drug, and for 24 hours after completing metronidazole, or 72 hours after completing tinidazole. Both drugs can cause allergic reactions, and allergic cross-reactivity may occur. Contrary to past beliefs, current evidence shows that metronidazole is safe during any stage of pregnancy. Multiple studies and meta-analyses have shown no association between metronidazole use during pregnancy and teratogenic or mutagenic effects in infants. The safety of tenodazole in pregnancy has not been well evaluated. When Amanda returns for her next visit, she confirms that both she and her partner took the medication. She reports that the vaginal discharge and irritation have resolved. You say, having sex only with one person who has been treated for any infections is an important way to protect yourself from getting another infection in the future. The recurrence rate of trichomoniasis is relatively high. The CDC recommends re-screening in three months for women with documented trichomoniasis to detect reinfection. While most recurrent trichomonas vaginalis infections are thought to result from reinfection due to exposure to an untreated partner, in some cases, reduced susceptibility to metronidazole may result in persistent infection. When Amanda returns for her postpartum visit three months later, she is re-screened with NAT, which is negative.